Hey there, it's McGee again. Uh, I thought I would post a video of the process of working on this painting that I was submitting to a local um, Palestine-focused uh, art show in the city I live near. Um, I have two pieces. I was going to do three, but I just wasn't having luck with the third one. It wasn't turning out. So I stuck with the initial two, um, one of which is the Palestine sunbird, and this one here, which uh, I wanted to draw some of the Palestine uh, mountain gazelle. Oh my gosh, words. Palestine mountain gazelle. Uh, so I um, decided to work on this um, on like a nice afternoon and I didn't really have a full plan for what I wanted the final illustration to be, but uh, I just sort of winged it. <laughs> um, I started drawing and I ended up drawing this uh, single gazelle just sort of leaping and then I thought, hey, it'd be kind of neat to do three different gazelle and uh, and then combine them to be the colors of the um, flag, Palestinian flag. Uh, so as a result, uh, you'll see later as I'm painting the colors I chose for them, not their natural colors, quite obviously. Um, but I mean, the process for this was the same as the process for most things. I did some studies, I looked up photos, I um, looked at pictures of the animals in motion. I definitely did this illustration a lot more in my like personal style versus the Palestine sunbird, which I tried to do a little more realistically. Uh, I still did that thing where I leave the eyes just white on both of them. I don't know why I do that when I try to do more realistic stuff. I think it's because when I've tried to paint the eyes in um, with how simple I do my coloring, they end up just looking basically like they have the cold dead eyes of a shark. Not ideal, <laughs> especially when you're trying to make a piece that I don't know, that you want somebody to look at and and to to think about the context of it as opposed to just something I've thrown together. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of uh, fun drawing and painting these guys and since I don't have a whole lot to talk about with the process, because um, again, you can see it there and it's the same as most of my processes, uh, I thought I would talk about some tips uh, if you're experiencing um, like activist burnout, which is a thing and it happens. Um, a reminder, when you experience activist burnout, a lot of people will end out just going all or nothing, um, where you've been putting everything into protesting and emailing and calling representatives and um, finding every way in which you can to do be supportive sharing and posting and reposting and doing whatever you can obviously different areas you can do more things if you live in certain areas you can do less things but a lot of people will go all as hard as they can for as long as they can and then they'll hit this point of activist burnout and then they'll switch to nothing and sometimes that leads to this apathy that results in you continuing to do nothing which is not what we want and it doesn't help um so a reminder, I guess, when you're participating in activism, especially looking to push for a ceasefire and to support the Palestinian people in things this 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 big and this broad and this honestly disheartening, because I too feel a lot of the time like I'm just screaming into the void, that I'm doing these things as just a part of the motion and it doesn't feel like it's resulting in anything remind yourself that as small as it is every little bit counts and that also means that in order to keep yourself going because this is a long haul project it's not a sprint it's a marathon same with most of these types of causes a lot of people will get excited and join them feeling like they're going to do a bunch and something's going to happen and it's going to be amazing and you're going to feel so friggin accomplished and it's oh look at all this stuff that's changed because of my personal choice it's not a lot of the time it's a long haul process. It's it's putting in a lot of time over a long time, keeping these things in the back of your head, having to try and fit them in around your daily life and things like that. We live in a capitalist system. We're all a little bit screwed in that sense. I mean, a lot of us are a lot screwed in that sense, but it, it means that we have to, we have to fit it in as opposed to being able to make it a cause. And again, that's where this burnout will happen, because if you fit in every waking moment trying to do every single thing you possibly can, you'll hit a point where you'll hit a wall. So uh, some tips for helping with activist burnout so that you can keep participating and keep yourself from getting apathetic. Um, so every day, take an assessment. How much energy do you have that day? What things can you fit into your schedule that day? You're not going to do nothing. 
we don't want that. You can't do nothing. But if that day you, you know, realize that, like, your energy is low, you can't be making phone calls. Or you haven't been feeling well because you physically are getting sick from either uh, external reasons or um, from the stress of everything. <laughs> Maybe that day you focus on just drafting up letters, drafting up emails, getting them ready to send out. You focus on reposting things. You focus on sharing things. You focus on talking to your friends about the things that they're doing to kind of help you feel part of it. You witness stuff, you know, there's, take a daily assessment, see what you can do in that day. Do something, don't do nothing, but do something. Um, try your best to take care of yourself in other ways. You do get the privilege, a lot of us get the privilege of being able to do this while the people we are trying to provide our activism for cannot. And it will make you feel extremely guilty and it makes me feel extremely shameful and guilty for wanting to take care of myself on top of that. But I'm using that privilege and you should be too. The privilege you get to be able to consider your well-being means that you can do this for a long term. You can invest in this long term. You can pull through and keep fighting when the people who are stuck in this have to live it every day. Like, they aren't always going to be able to do this. They aren't always going to be able to hold up. They're going to lose hope sometimes. And that's where you using your privilege of being able to take care of yourself in these windows allows you to keep going so that they're not forced to when they already have so much going on. So take care of yourself. It's, it seems selfish. It feels selfish. Make sure you're doing something at the same time, but take care of yourself. Take your sick days. Make sure you're eating enough. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. You want to be able to do this for as long as you possibly can. You are in it for the long haul. Don't know how else to say it. <laughs> uh, schedule action hours into your week. So if, say, you work a full-time job and often work overtime, you work in a career that requires a lot of energy and mind power and work from you, um, try and schedule in the stuff that you want to do. If it's if it's hard, getting harder and harder to fit it into the day necessarily because of life and all the other things going on, schedule it. I have these days off this week. Half of that day is going to be my time to call my reps and to send all of my emails. And uh, I'm making sure I'm going to the protest on the Saturday. So when I'm done the protest, I'm going to be doing this, this, and this. I've scheduled it in. It's made a block. It is essentially like work time, big air quotes, for me to work on this specifically. If that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. Again, I'm going to keep saying it, but you're in it for the long haul. You're trying to keep up with this. So, you know, do that. Uh, be aware of your symptoms for burnout. You know, exhaustion, cynicism, inefficacy, feeling like what you're doing isn't working, this feeling like nothing is important, nothing is helping, and then obviously feeling emotionally and physically drained or um, exhausted. Those are signs that you are entering burnout and you need to start taking action now so you don't get to that phase where you're just apathetic, where you give up and you stop trying. You want to get ahead of this. Again, we have this privilege. We better fucking use it so that we can keep going for as long as we have to, to, to help Palestine or to help the Congo or to help Sudan. Whatever cause you are trying to work towards to help with these people, even if it isn't necessarily Palestine right now, although I strongly urge you to be lending your voice to those who are trying to push for a ceasefire and to help the Palestinian people. But whatever this cause is, be aware of when you're starting to enter burnout so that you can get ahead of it. Also, take part in collective efforts. It can feel a lot like doing things on your own is, again, like screaming into the void, like you're throwing money at nothing, like you're doing these actions and it's not resulting in anything. But if you're able to do it through collective efforts, those tend to be um, more impactful in the long run. They also tend to give you that feedback that makes you feel like that combats that cynicism, that inefficacy feeling, like that makes you feel like you are part of something and you're, you're getting this work done. It's, it's not bad. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> so there's a handful of tips. Keep them in mind. Um, some other things to always do as well. 
these aren't for burnout, but in just in general, make sure that if you're advocating for a cause or a movement or a people, that you are listening to the people at the center of that movement. It's not about you, it's about them. So make sure, in the case of Palestine, you're following Palestinian uh, journalists on the ground, like Bisan or Motaz. Um, make sure that you're looking at Palestinian art and listening to their voices. Make sure that you're amplifying the people and not just trying to pat yourself on the back for doing a good job and being a good, good ally. That's not what this is about. It is human rights. It is what is important. You don't matter in that case. Which sounds <laughs> counterintuitive to the previous parts, but I hope you understand what I mean. It's not about you, it's about them, and that is why you need to be doing it for the long haul. It's not about your own gratification in this process. It is about fighting for human rights and fighting to protect a people. So, I hope you liked watching my gazelle. I hope some of my tips were helpful in any case, and I hope you find ways to keep pushing or a ceasefire and keep pushing to get the Palestinian people the justice that they deserve and hopefully things will turn out better and hopefully together we make a difference. Make sure you take, take part in the boycotts. If nothing else, boycotts. They're doing a number and it is helping. So if you can't do anything else, boycott. That's probably the most important one. All right. Have a great day. Thank you for your support and free Palestine.